So the AAF is over with. Dead in the water after an abrupt move to fold the league by owner Tom Dundon. But the league's epic failure continues to leave behind stories told by those closest to the situation. Former AAF employees. Sports Illustrated dropped a part two to their League on Fire article. And today I wanna take a look at a few of the wildest stories from that article. Huge shout out to the writer, Connor Orr did a phenomenal job. And if you wanna go and check out his full article, I'm gonna leave the link down in the description. Some of these stories are kinda of sad, some a bit infuriating and all of them are interesting. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Be sure to stick around to the end. Also, whether you're new here or you're a vet, be sure that you're subscribed and have your notifications enabled because YouTube has said clicking the bell is the only way to ensure that you get the videos when I drop them. Other than that, without further ado, y'all already know what time it is. Chew the way. Beast Mode is one of the few cats that actually got paid. Now obviously Beast Mode himself did not suit up for the AAF, but what you're about to witness is something that's pretty rare. A Marshawn Lynch interview. What this means to see Josh getting an opportunity on another stage with the Alliance of American Football in San Diego. You just put me on the spot. Bro. I did, yeah. Yeah, you did. I mean, like he said though, it's a blessing. And just to, just to know and see uh, all the hard work that he put in. You know what I'm talking about since we was playing football in the backyard at the house, just to see him, you know, being able to continue to stick to it after all the ups and downs through the NFL. And, you know what I'm saying, though, to be able to come be the first pick in this draft is uh, that's tough. Well, it's amazing to have your cousin here to support you. Good luck, Josh. We can't wait to see you out on the field leading the fleet in San Diego. Congratulations. Let's, let's go SD. We're bringing it back. <laughs> All right, guys, you heard it here. Let's go back to the booth. Now, regardless of what you think about the quality of that 40-second clip, Marshawn Lynch managed to get paid from it up front and in full. When Marshawn's cousin quarterback Josh Johnson, former Bengal, was taken in the AAF draft, Marshawn showed up in support. When Charlie Eppersall found out that the star running back was there, he took the opportunity to ask for an interview. Now, we all know Marshawn's history with the media and could surmise that if he only interviewed for the NFL in order to not be fined, he probably wasn't going to do an interview here. When asked, Marshawn, in what I believe was an attempt to brush the league off, said he'd do a two-minute interview for $5,000. When the league quickly produced a check for that amount, he realized that, all right, he'd been unsuccessful in turning them around, so he then demanded that they take the check back and bring him $5,000 worth of quarters. Now listen, you can't make this up, bro. You bring a man a $5,000 check, he tell you, no, 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 take this back, bring me back 20,000 quarter. This was a request so ridiculous that I'm sure the league got the hint that, okay, he just really doesn't want to do the interview. Despite all of that, Charlie Eppersall swallowed his pride and decided to play ball. So they showed back up the Marshawn's hotel room with 20,000 quarters, bro. Met his demands, paid him in full, and that's how we got that 40 seconds of gold that y'all just watched a few seconds ago. Last February, the AAF was brainstorming ideas for Super Bowl 53 commercials. After a whole bunch of deliberation, finally, they'd come up with the perfect idea. Two words, Bill Murray. The idea was for Bill Murray to be set up at a piano singing Leonard Cohen's classic timeless song, Hallelujah. So the ad was gonna cut back between Bill Murray singing his song and dudes getting absolutely thrashed you know, big hits on the football field, hits that presumably had been pretty much banned from the NFL. And so he's singing a song in celebration and rejoice that these hits are back. You know what I'm saying? All you gotta do is come on over to the AAF. That's the idea behind the ad. And it sounds pretty dope. Here's the problem. Bill Murray is an impossible guy to get a hold of. He doesn't have an agent or manager or anything like that. And the only way to get in contact with this dude, if you're not like family, is through an 800 number. Like I'm not making this up, bro. <laughs> through an 800 number. And you have to call and leave a voicemail. Like I can't wait till I get to that level. That's like a whole nother level right there. Anyway, they call, they leave the message and amazingly, they eventually get a response. Probably not the response that they were looking for but it's hard to tell if this was a good or bad response what did he say let me check my horoscope now bill murray is he's known as a recluse he's a little bit out there kind of 
march to the beat of his own drum so when that type of person say let me check my horoscope you really don't know how to take it this could lead to a yes this could lead to a no <sighs> who knows unfortunately they were never able to get in contact with them again and all the plans fell through looking at the whole thing i kind of wish they would have just picked somebody else and went through with the commercial because it sounds pretty dope as a matter of fact here's a quick example of kind of what it could have been Imagine getting paid in 2K VC or Madden coins only for the servers to go offline the very next day. Yeah, we're going there. So by now, everybody knows about the AAF's notorious money problem. Still, they have promised players bonuses for, you know, certain actions on the field, scoring a touchdown, 100 yard games, even things like community service. Now, they didn't have the cash flow to make this happen week to week, so they figured out a creative way to solve that issue, or at least put a band aid on it and extend it, push it back, right? They gave the players coins now i don't know what these coins look like but they were essentially a currency that had no value outside of the aaf however the players were told that they would be able to cash these coins in at the end of the season these this was their bonuses so you got dudes doing community service every week hitting all their bonuses making sure and just stacking up their coins because at the end of the year boom they're gonna cash these in and be sitting on a nice piece of change some of the players even went as far as to say is that when they was pitched this idea it was made to seem like they would be able to double their salary with these bonuses if they really went after it you know what i'm saying that would suggest that the value of these coins was pretty high but that value was never defined like they never said how much the coins was worth and over time as the players was reading in the news about all of the cash flow problems that the league had they started to speculate like yo is these coins worth fifty thousand dollars or 50 cent like they had no clue in the meantime players just kind of kept stacking their coins and hoping for the best unfortunately once the league folded those coins effectively turned out to be nothing more than monopoly money damn fortnite PUBG, apex legends blackout and the aaf what do they all have in common? When the AAF folded, the league's offices pretty much turned into the first few minutes of a battle royale game. Things went from having a feeling of a dysfunctional yet close-knit family to all-out anarchy as employees started just looking out for themselves and completely raided the offices for supplies in a massive loot fest. Here's a quote from one of the former employees. I watched the biggest loot fest I've ever seen. Cameras disappeared, flat screens. I watched a full-time coach walk out the building carrying a 55 inch tv i watched people carry printers out it was unbelievable and for the final story of the day brad sternberg who was an employee of my san antonio commanders caught a flight with the team during week six to atlanta to take on the atlanta legends his wife was pregnant at the time and was scheduled to go into labor that following week well as fate would have it the moment brad landed he got a call saying that his wife had gone into labor so brad went to speak to the gm who he reported directly to the GM immediately pulled out his credit card and was like, yo, find a flight, get back home quick as you can. Here's the problem. The baby was coming that night and there were no flights from Atlanta to San Antonio that would get there in time. So the entire coaching staff and all the support staff and everybody went to a local bar and Brad FaceTimed his wife as she gave birth to their son. The whole staff cheered and you know, it was a party. So it kind of ended up being a dope moment, but I'm pretty sure Brad would have preferred to have been there in person. This was a sacrifice that Brad made for his job that he loved. He knew every single game was gonna be important to make sure the league was successful for the next three years like they had been promised. So he knew he'd sacrifice that moment, but at least it wasn't in vain. Two weeks later, the league folded. Damn. <laughs> 